Our fifth presenter is Amaranth Kara, whose title is 3D Printing of High Temperature Melting Metals, Why and How? Let's just do a quick survey in this room. Growing up, how many of us have watched Star Wars or any other sci-fi films and wanted to become an astronaut one day? That's a great number. How many of us, if ever so vaguely, remember the 2003 Columbian space shuttle disaster that upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere shattered into a million pieces, taking the life of those astronauts who made their childhood dream a reality? Now, although there are multiple reasons for this crash, one of the primary reasons is the inability of the material to maintain strength at such high temperatures. Researchers ever since have been trying to solve this problem, although with a little success. Either the choice of materials are not great enough, or it takes a lot of taxpayers' money. We at our lab believe that we have the right mix of new age tech and proper materials to make sure that the history does not repeat itself. Those materials that not only withstand high temperature strength, but also are manufactured at a lower cost with the help of metal 3D printing. Now, metal 3D printing, unlike traditional routes of manufacturing, uses a complex design given by a computer and a suitable technique. In our case, that suitable technique is called the directed energy deposition. Now, as the name suggests, it directs a laser beam on the metal surface, melting the metal surface and the powder, thereby getting the layer by layer structure. You can think of it as building something from Legos. Now, throughout history, tungsten has been there for a while. People did use tungsten, although because of its high temperature melting and also its crackability, it's been an issue to use in space applications. However, with the advent of 3D technologies, tungsten and tungsten-like materials like tantalum have shown some initial good steps. With the help of energy conservation relationships, we believe that it is not tungsten and tantalum, but a mixture of tungsten, tantalum, and rhenium that could solve this problem. Our 3D simulations have shown us that this mixture gives us not only a very good strength, high temperature material, but also at a lower cost that could be manufactured. To test this out and to test our technique out, we tried to print tungsten and tantalum, and we believe we are a step in the right direction. We hope that in the future, we become the inspiration for the next-gen scientists, and we hope that the loss of lives of these scientists is not gone in vain. We think that the, the future of space travel is safe and economic with our research. Thank you. <laughs>